Hello and welcome to the Photoshop demo for Unit 3 Emphasis. Uh, again, just to reiterate, it is not the purpose of these demos or this class to teach you everything there is to know about Photoshop. Um, I'm going to show you the text tools and some of the techniques that you'll need to know to do the emphasis assignment. And if you want to do, if you want to learn more than that, then you can feel free to look up some more stuff on YouTube or Google or anything like that. Um, but let's just get started and uh, what I want to do is start a new file once again file new or command N um, as we go along uh, it, I will eventually start using these shortcut keys so um, I'm gonna start a new file here with command N and I'm going to just call this my name text demo uh, that's arbitrary I'm just kinda of throwing that out there and 7 by 5 is fine, just the default Photoshop is fine. And I'll click OK. And what I want to do is basically just start with the text tool. And that's right here, it looks like a little T. And the text tool is really quite straightforward. Basically it works in one of two ways. You can, um, you can see my text tool is active now and when I click on this I'm gonna be able to start typing I can either just single click and start typing like this uh, but I can also click and drag which will define a bounding box for that text so if I'm doing it this way then my text will stay within that box as you can see so and in fact I actually ran out the edges of it so what I'm doing here is basically one or two things I I can either click and type infinitely with just a single click and that line will just keep going and going all the way off the page into infinity or I can define a bounding box like I did here so they're both um, <clears throat> To, they're both the same tool, they're just working in two different ways. Uh, I'm going to select all these all these layers and just delete them and I'm not sure if I've talked about this, I can just I can select these and down here I can delete whatever's selected with this little trash can and this makes a new blank layer, I think I mentioned this last time. This one I didn't mention last time, this makes a layer group, a folder of layers and the other ones here, we're not going to worry about those right now. Just uh, keep it simple. Um, I'm just going to select all three of them and just drag them down to that trash can icon. So that just gets rid of them. Um, the text tools options are basically going to look sort of, they're going to look familiar. It's sort of like what you might see on um, a word processor, but it's not really a word processor. Obviously, that's not what Photoshop does but here we've got a font selection whatever fonts you have in your computer um, I think you know I assume everybody knows how this works I'm not gonna really belabor it um, the uh, oh, and I just lost my styles let me get a an example with styles um, the styles are the next one It's like regular bold italic things like that not all fonts have styles um, as you can see this one only has regular and bold and um, if I were to choose Times New Roman I know that it's gonna have regular and italic and bold so got some different choices for different fonts but they're all kinda their own beast so to speak I'll put it on press start for fun then this here is the type size or the font size I think everybody knows basically what that is. Mine's at 25 points right now. And this is just anti-aliasing, and you can just leave this on the default. Anti-aliasing refers to how the edges are handled um, around curves and things like that. The edges will look blocky and pixelated if they're not anti-aliased properly. Um, we'll just leave that on the default and I'm not really too worried about what that means this this semester so um, if you want to know more about it you can look that up but it's nothing to bother yourself over this is the alignment of the text so you got left justify 
uh, center justify and right justify or align as the case may be. This is the color of the text and this is a text warp. So let's just take a look at a couple of those things. Um, remember the assignment is not about you're not trying to write out words, you're trying to look at the letter forms as shapes. So let's see if I uh, yeah, we'll go with M. Now that's kind of small. I think I would like it to be bigger, so I can do that right up here. But what this is going to do is it needs to be selected if I'm going to change something about it. And I can just click and drag to highlight that. And now I can change this font size with this slider. That's not the only way to do it. You can actually just type the numbers in if you want to, or you can use the drop down. That's up to you. That's just a personal preference. Any of them work equally well. So it doesn't matter how you change the font size, but that's how you change the uh, font size. Those are a couple different methods. Um, color is right here. Keep in mind, again, just to reiterate, you can only use one method. Uh, you can only use color as a method of emphasis one time. So you want to use one unique method each time. And also, another thing to keep in mind, um, Color only works as a method of emphasis when you're emphasizing it in contrast to something else. So that's not really much of a method of emphasis if there's huge swaths of gaudy color all over the canvas. It's not going to really work. So it has to be in contrast to something else. So keep that in mind, and that's true of all these methods of emphasis. Again, simplicity versus complexity only works when there's some contrast there, just like color and contrast itself. So, so I'm just playing around here. This is a um, uh, couple of letter shapes on top of one another, and it's basically creating, um, starting to create a little composition. And these are the different layers. These are being created as I'm typing. If I create a new text layer, it just puts it on the next one up. So that O, that got put on the top layer there. I can turn on my Move tool. We learned about this last time. Um, it looks like it disappears when it comes away from the end, but that's just because I made the color white. So it's still there. It's just white. Now. These can be transformed. Let me put this back in. Let's do that. That's fun. Why not? Now these can be transformed in the same way that we learned before. Command T or Edit Transform. Free Transform, I should say, under the Edit menu. Um, I like that Command T or Control T if you're on PC. I like that shortcut best for Transform. So, but transform works the same way that we learned before, and it's something that's very useful in this assignment. So I can size this up. I can squash it and stretch it, as I said before, um, if I want to do that. And it starts to create some inf interesting shapes to draw a negative space on top of positive space, just like we learned in the last unit. Um, this stuff can be kind of... Uh, interesting. We can start to create some some compositional effects here. So I'm not saying this is a great composition when I'm doing any of these demonstrations. I'm not saying this is good design. I'm just saying here's the tools you need. So don't take it that way. But it is starting to get kind of interesting. Not you know it's a start. It's something. Um, so let me undo that. Oops, not that. There we go. So that's the transform, and if I wanted to create, let's say, I don't know, to actually start creating some emphasis, um, I was typing. I just typed it a lowercase i there, and it's white, so you can't see it. So um, let's make it a color of some kind. So there we go.
Now this is, um, I'm, I'm just kind of choosing stuff at random here. So again, just keep that in mind. This is, I just lowered the opacity. This is a, an example of color emphasis. It's going to draw your eye towards the color, but again, that's only because nothing else is using that color. Um, you'll see the character changes really fast. The, the character of the composition changes really fast if I change the M to that same yellowy orange tone. Let me see if I can get it pretty close here. There we go. And now we've got, in fact, the eye disappears. So now we've got a whole different ball game. I'll just change this just enough to make the eye appear. This is no longer emphasized by color. So keep that in mind. You've got to have some form of contrast. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to throw them all out again. I'm just going to select all these layers and just drop them in the trash can. That gets rid of them. And I'll try a different... Um, different font here. This is going to be, where is it? One of my favorites. Oh, it's down. Silly me. Trajan Pro. Trajan Pro is one of my favorites. I like it. So, there's a nice upright regal capital T. This is um, something that you can do if you want. In fact, I'll, yeah. If you try the warp tool right here. This can have some use. Um, create warped text. This has a couple of different styles in it. As you can see, and basically, <clears throat> um, I don't think I need to really show all these, but what you want to do is just experiment with this and kind of play with the settings and see what, see what kind of results you get. Um, you don't I don't really have much of a scientific explanation for any of these settings in Photoshop in most cases, but um, what I do is I just kind of experiment with it until I've got the visual look that I'm interested in for whatever reason. Bulge. So actually I think really flag is in kind of the most interesting one that I've gotten so far. And I can take that and I can proceed to transform it with Command T. I can rotate it around if I want, things like that. Um, another thing you can do with your transform is you can hold down the Command key and you can start to distort it. You can grab one corner and change it in a way that's that's going to squash it or stretch it in a in a manner that distorts its proportions. So that can be interesting. Let's see if I can give you a better example. It's doing kind of strange stuff right now. Maybe it's because I warped it. Let me try Try my <clears throat> try my hand with another letter form here. Let's see if this works. So I just made another letter, and I'm going to use that Command T, and I'm going to distort it. I, this is kind of behaving strangely. It's not supposed to do quite this, and I don't understand exactly what it's doing. So you should be able to, di to distort this. Let's try this. I'm going to cancel, and I'm going to click Edit, Transform, Skew. Let's try that. So this is a method of distorting the proportions. And you can make this into um, sort of a, you can do a lot with it. You could make it into a distortion, or you could, you could actually kind of make it into a perspective view with this if you want to. So um, that's another thing to play with is distorting it. Again, don't forget sizing and simply moving stuff around and rotating it. By the way, if you've got your text tool active, right now this is active and I'm typing, so blah, 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 blah. I'll change that back. If you point your cursor outside of that, 
it just becomes the move tool. So kind of a little convenient little shortcut for you. So one of the um, one of the one of the examples that you would have seen kind of had an effect like this on it. I thought it was a really great example. Um, let me see if I can get some lowercase letters. This is just something to kind of play with as a way of creating some motion. Um, you know, don't you don't have to copy this. I'd prefer you didn't, in fact, but you know, there's the idea is just I'm trying to give you an idea of what the assignment what can be done with the assignment and how to use the tools. So it just kind of becomes some letter forms kind of falling down the slope of the of the stem on the T and and they're kind of tumbling off there and maybe coming down like a slide wee and then they fall off. So <clears throat> that kind of fun stuff is is always cool to see. So what else is there? Let me go into D2L and I'm going to jump into the emphasis unit here and I'm going to grab the template and the text tool like I said that's the main thing you're going to be using just to recap here the text tool will just create your your basic letter forms and what you can do is you can resize them, you can squash them, stretch them, warp them, and do all that kind of good stuff. Move them around, rotate them, um, warp the text with this effect if you would like. And so the list goes on like that. Um, another thing that you might want to do, some students would prefer to clean up the edges around their compositions. And um, good for you. That's great. Go ahead and do that. So in order to do that, you need to erase the edges on the layers that come out from the sides. Now the eraser tool is right here. But here's the problem. I'm going to turn on the eraser tool and I'm going to put this on block mode. That's the easiest way to do this because it gives you a nice straight hard line so that it'll follow these edges very well. But when I try to activate this, I can see I've got this little, um, I've got this little no symbol. And what's happening is that this layer is not a pixel layer, and um, instead it's a text layer. The eraser is a pixel tool, like a brush or a pencil, and it doesn't work on text layers. So if I click on this, what it's going to, what's going to happen is it's going to say the type layer uh, must be rasterized before proceeding. Its text will no longer be editable. Do you want to rasterize the type? Um, it's perfectly fine to do this. Just be aware that you cannot change what you typed once you click OK. It is, it's this forever. So it's basically, it's basically now pixels and it can never be changed. So the eraser tool will now work as a pixel tool. And again, remember, shift constrains proportions. If you're using shift with a tool that you can click and drag with, it constrains. So shift with the block eraser or any eraser will make it go in a straight line. So that's kind of handy. Uh, one more thing, just one more thing to show. If you want to um, play with this, it's something a lot of people like to play with, but we'll give it a try. The text tool, or any other tool, shapes, brushes, anything like that, has the ability to, um, when it, as long as it's on its own layer, you have the ability to add layer effects. So here's the layer I just created, and this is uh, the layer effects, you get to them in a certain way. The layer has a couple of different areas, and if you click on any of these, they all do different things. So if you click on this part right here, it's going to turn the visibility on and off. If you click on this icon, you're going to edit the contents of the layer. If you click on this little bit, you're going to edit the name of the layer. Now, to get to the layer effects, what you want to do is you want to double click the large empty area of the layer, just like that. 
and here are the layer effects. And when you're using this, I got a couple tips basically. Um, first of all, try to use layer effects that are um, subtle and just don't go overboard. And second of all, when you're first doing this, it, probably your first inclination is just to turn them on and off with that checkbox. Um, don't do that. Actually, click on the words of the effects that you want. So with bevel and emboss, I didn't click on the checkbox here. I clicked on the words bevel and emboss. And that gets me into the actual options for the bevel and emboss. So I can actually change some of this stuff around and make it a little bit more to my liking. And what I do typically with this stuff is I dial it back a notch because um, you want it hopefully to be a little bit more subtle. Um, so again, like gradient overlay for example. Um, if I click on the words I get into the gradient editor. I can click on this gradient editor and I can actually change stuff with the gradient. So very useful and this gradient editor appears in, in places throughout Photoshop too. Um, good thing to have. They like, uh, they like to be Gradients are kind of a big deal these days in design. Everybody likes gradients. Uh, these are stops in a gradient. These are basically areas of color. A gradient is just a fade from one color to another. So this first stop, this is kind of a dark red. It's going to fade to sort of an orangey color. And the orangey color is going to fade to a yellowy orange. And I could go further with this too. I can put more stops in here if I want to fade it to a yellowy kind of color. You can do that. Um, and it goes on like that. You can you can play with this, but that's basically what a gradient is. That's how the gradient editor works. And there's, there's presets too to play with if you want. Um, I don't typically use a ton of presets. I typically will make my own stuff. So better to do it that way, I think. <coughs> Um, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'm not going to. I'll I'll hit a few more of these. Uh, stroke. I like the the out the stroke is basically an outline. I like to outline my text a lot of times. And again, you can go you can go light on this stuff. Uh, drop shadow. Everybody loves drop shadow, right? So drop shadow again. Same thing with drop shadow and all these effects. Frankly, um, less is more. Just just go easy on it. You can dial down the opacity. You can bring the distance in a little bit. If you're on a low resolution, it might help. Um, if you're on a higher resolution, you might barely see this. And you might have to actually bring the distance and the size out a little bit. But without going into too much more detail, just play with this stuff and give it some uh, experimentation. Just try stuff out and see what happens. Play with it until you get the look you want. That's really all there is to say about it. So I'm going to click OK and I'm going to see in my layer panel now that I've got these layer effects ready to go and I can also turn them on and off either as a whole right here or I can turn them off individually. So without bevel and emboss, without stroke, without gradient, without drop shadow. So that's layer effects. And those are pretty much the tools that you need for the emphasis assignment. That should pretty much cover it. And just what I mainly want you to show me is four different methods of emphasis. Uh, one can be color. Um, you can also use isolation if you want. You can use contrast. You can use um, basically any of the ones that were listed in that particular document. So that should give you enough to play with and that should tell you um, enough about the assignment that hopefully you should be able to do good at it. Thank you very much.